So as I try to do every day, yesterday I was looking for interesting things to bring you guys and I stumbled across a Donald Trump interview. And what makes it fascinating isn't what Trump said, because on the whole, it's just the nonsensical ramblings of an absolute lunatic named Donald Trump, who we all have to pay attention to, unfortunately, because he's a former president and a danger to democracy. But it's fascinating that his energy was so low. Frankly, guys, he sounded devastated during the interview. He sounded like a man whose entire day, entire week was ruined. And I wondered why, because it wasn't Trump sounding weak and dementia ridden like he sometimes does. It was him sounding sad. And then it clicked. When the news broke, it re I realized that at the exact same time as this interview, effectively, he was just informed that he took another massive, embarrassing, unambiguous defeat at the hands of a judge. He tried to beg a judge for mercy and she shut him down quickly like never before. First, here's the clip. See what happens, Bruce. Donald J. Trump is our guest talking about the Senate primary in the state of Ohio. And there is one candidate who did not seek your endorsement, Matt Dolan, and he's been surging. And I think he's been surging because people didn't uh, take him seriously because he was so far off the pace. And that's allowed him I think, to skate on being a supporter of the Equality Act in Ohio, which would give protected class to LGBTQ plus citizens. Certainly, we don't want any kind of discrimination, but I don't think Matt Dolan is an authentic conservative. Uh, your view of Dolan and his surge? Well, I, know much, I don't know much about him. I do know that he is involved with the Cleveland Indians and being somewhat of a baseball fan. I didn't think the name change was... A good thing. I think anybody that makes that change is very woke or wokey or a potential wokey. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit like you just said. I, I thought it was a, a terrible change. It wasn't like some of the other teams. You know, Redskins, well, the Washington Redskins, I think I like that name. I don't think I would have been so easy to change it. He did fight it for a long time, but uh, I was shocked to see the Cleveland Indians, one of the originals, the Cleveland Indians were changed. And that would actually, you know, and I, I said it in a joking way, but that would actually get me not to vote for somebody like that. I just wouldn't do that. And he hasn't been bad to me. He's been respectful. But, uh, you know, I just, I thought, I think it's terrible that they changed. To me, that's a big deal. That's, you know, an institution that's been there for a long time, I guess, like 1916. And uh, I don't think he should have changed that name. I also think he devalues the franchise. I think even from that standpoint, it's, uh, it's a bad thing to do. So I wouldn't be voting for them. I, I said a couple of times that that will take him out of the race. And I think, you know, we'll see what happens. You have a lot of Trump people running against one person that's uh, a little bit lesser. Not completely, but he's certainly lesser. So I, so I wanted to play that for you. So you got the sense again, what he's saying there is basically irrelevant. It's his tone that matters. He's talking about the upcoming primary that just happened last night where his guy did end up winning. So maybe Donald Trump's a little bit happier today, but the point is that that's a man that's just got some bad news. He's almost distracted during that interview. Like he's distracted and mentally get distant even more than usual. And it's because he tried to wipe his 10 K a day penalty in New York state. You know, the 10k penalty he's been facing and the judge found his argument so stupid so without merit so based on whining and not on actual legal fact that she took one sentence to reject him it says here nbc news reporter tom winter reported monday afternoon that former president donald trump is asking new york state appeals court to stay the fine he's been issued daily for refusing to comply with a subpoena trump fought a subpoena to hand over the documents involving his business practices as part of the investigation by Letitia james but ultimately a judge decided that trump must comply and that for each day he refused he would be issued a fine of 10k in his filing monday trump through his attorney called the judge unfair quote we have a judge that frankly has been an unbelievably unfair, Trump told, told Bloomberg via phone. We've given millions and millions of pages, and he says, give more, give more, always give more, Trump said. And then on the update, less than 24 hours later, Trump's lawyer on Monday asked the appellate division of the first judicial department to state Engeron's attempt order as he appeals the judge's finding. The lawyer, Alina Haba, argued in a filing that the contempt order was unconscionable and indefensible. The division rejected the stay request the next day, according to a written decision. And this is it. Interim appellate.
application denied. Trump's lawyer, Alina Habba, did not immediately respond for a request for comment on the decision on Tuesday, which left her client owing $80,000 in contempt penalties to date. And so that's basically it, guys. Donald Trump right now is getting smacked around. I can't underline how embarrassing that is. This is a sign that Trump's argument is just so bad because what these stays are for is that if there's a contentious, complex decision that's been made and the judges really want to make sure they get it right, they can stay a penalty, which is to say basically freeze it pause it pending appeal. If there's a chance that the argument is going to hurt someone if the decision was wrong, or if there's a chance that the argument is so contentious, the judge will issue a stay basically saying to Trump, okay, you won't be fined 10K a day until your appeal happens. But the judge rejected that because fundamentally she knows Trump has no argument. It's been very clear. There's been no unfairness here. There's been no bias here. Donald Trump was told by the judge, you were asked to produce these documents, these phones, these computers, these devices. And so until you and your lawyers do that, I'm going to fine you 10K a day. And you can produce more and more papers, but until you give me everything that I've ordered, we're going to continue fining you. And because Donald Trump brought no actual argument to the appeals court, no argument saying that the judge request was unreasonable, it was so insulting, the judge wasn't even required to write a response. And let's underline that. Donald Trump in this case is just a guy. He's not being sued as a former president. He in this case is technically no different than you and I. He's a regular citizen being investigated by a civil court. That's what's happening right now by a civil prosecutor. Nonetheless, he's still a former president and this big fancy quote unquote billionaire, the judge would feel compelled in almost any case to actually lay out their argument just to make sure that it doesn't look like they're being unfair to him. But because Trump's argument was so bad, he didn't even get that. Trump and his lawyers got on their knees begging for mercy so that they could get out of their fine and the judge shut them down like never before. If you're wondering why he sounded sad on the interview, that's why.